Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and in this video we are going to learn how to paint a semi-realistic eye in Procreate. So open up the app, create a new canvas and let's start drawing. And I say create a new canvas, but you're probably going to draw this eye on a portrait that you already have. But just for reference, the size of my canvas is really just the size of the screen. So that's usually the first option in Procreate and it's really because, I mean, this is just a demo so the size really doesn't matter. And the first thing to do if you are drawing an eye by itself is to set your background color to a skin color of your choice. And here you can see I am using a color palette which comes with my portrait bundle, but that's absolutely not necessary. You can just pick a color that you want to use. And we'll also need to have a sketch to get started with. So if you already have a portrait and you're just like drawing an eye, well, you're gonna go from there. Otherwise, go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to sketch. And you might want to change the blending mode of this layer to multiply and maybe lower the opacity around 50%. And I like to use the same color as my background for my sketching lines. Now, for the brush, it really does matter. I'm gonna use the Details Textured Brush from the Portrait Bundle, but you could use the uh, Dry Ink Brush or just the HB Pencil that comes with Procreate, because again, we're just like sketching right now, so it's totally up to whatever you're comfortable with. And then you're gonna loosely uh, sketch the shape of the eye. And we all have an idea of what an eye looks like, you know. But believe me, what makes the biggest difference in the end is if you actually look at references, because there are subtle changes that you can have in the shape of the eye itself and in the way the eyelids look that is going to make the eye look way much more realistic than if you just kind of go from what you have in mind. So take the time here to look at other ideas of eyes, pictures of eyes, and then do a really rough sketch. And in this video, I'm not gonna go super detailed about how to draw everything around the eye, because basically this video is an extension of my um, how to color a portrait video, which I will link in the description below and also add it in the annotations now. And in that video, I show you how to color the skin, the eyebrows, everything. But I went fairly quickly over the eyes because the video was already fairly long. So this is kind of the deep dive on the actual eye itself, but not so much about the surroundings. That being said, we are going to add a little bit of details around it. Otherwise, it's going to look really creepy <laughs> in this example. To do that, go ahead and start by creating a new layer that you're going to put below your sketch layer. You're also going to set the blending mode to multiply and lower the opacity around 60%. And you're going to rename this layer to shadows. And you're going to use really whichever brush you're comfortable with. So I'm going to go with the detail texture brush that come with the portrait bundle. You could go with the dry ink brush or really any brush that you know well. And we're going to start adding shadows around the top of the eyelid fold. So really loosely, we're just going to, you know, sketch it out and don't need to have any gradient here. We're pretty much just filling this entire section. And you're also going to uh, line the top of the eye itself. So you don't need to be super precise here because you're probably going to have eyelashes. And you're going to do the same thing on the bottom, but this time making sure you leave a little gap between the actual eyeball and this shadow. And this is going to basically show that there is some thickness to your eyelid, which is very important because it's not just like a paper little thin thing. It actually has some thickness that's going to greatly help in the realism of your eye in the end. And don't worry too much about, you know, details at this step. Really go super roughly because we're going to add a detail layer later and kind of refine everything. And you can use the smudge tool. I like to set it to the sticker brush that comes with Procreate in the painting section and kind of blend everything in a little bit. But again, no worries about, you know, perfection here. We just kind of want to have an idea of the volumes around the eye so that when we start painting the actual eye in the next step, we're going to just know a little bit better of, of, of what's going on. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started with the actual eye itself, which is what the video is all about. And for the eye, as you can see, we're going to create a bunch of layers, but don't worry about it. Right now, just start by creating a new one that you're going to rename to eyeball, and the blending mode of this one is just normal. And we're going to color the actual like shape of the eyeball itself. So for that, go ahead and pick a cream color. You want to make sure that it's not pure white, otherwise you won't be able to add lights later, and that, that would be... That would be really sad. <laughs> and all you're doing here is you're going to start by outlining the shape of your eye. And you can use, again, whichever brush that you've been using so far. 
and take your time here to make sure that the shape is exactly the shape you want it to be. You could tweak it later, but it's going to be a bit more difficult. And this, this base layer, this eyeball layer, we're really going to uh, make the most out of it. Meaning it's going to be, as you're going to see later, I'm going to explain it to you, it's going to be used as a base for a clipping mask. So everything else that we draw is going to rely on this shape. And once you have the outline, you can just fill it in using color drop and moving your pencil from left to right, you can actually like adjust the threshold so that it only fills the eye color and nothing else. And then you might want to clean up the edges a little bit so that everything is like nice, solid, clean, white. Well, cream. <laughs> and the next layer you're going to create is going to be named hollow. It's also going to be set as normal. And you're going to double tap on that layer and select Clipping Mask. And what Clipping Mask does is everything we draw on this hollow shape, or hollow layer, I should say, is going to stay within the shape of the eyeball that we just created. So you don't have to worry about, you know, drawing outside the lines. It's always going to stay within this base shape. So that's really cool. And for this hollow color, you're going to go with a very light blue and a super soft brush. So either the extra soft brush that comes with the portrait bundle or in the airbrushing panel, the soft brush that comes with Procreate. And you're going to loosely draw this little hollow shape around the iris. And you're going to see later that right now it looks crazy, but you're going to see later it adds a lot of dimension to the piece in general and it's super quick. You're then going to create another layer. This one is going to be renamed iris and it is also applied as a clipping mask. And you're going to pick the color you want your eye to be. So in my case, I'm going to grab the color palette that comes with the portrait bundle again, but you can really pick any color of your choice. So I'm going with this bluish gray and going back to my detail texture brush. So you could go back with, to whichever brush you are using. And you're gonna draw a circle. You can go really quickly, then hold your pencil and with a secondary finger, just tap on the screen and it's gonna create a perfect circle in Procreate, which is really helpful. And then using color drop, you can fill in and again, just tweak the edges to make sure that it is a solid color. And because it is a clipping mask, if you, we use the arrow tool, we can move it around wherever we want. And you see, it just stays within the shape. So that's super, super helpful. Once it is exactly where you want it to be, uh, you can lower the opacity of your sketch a little bit because we're going to start adding details and if the sketch is too dark, it's going to get a bit confusing. So still on your iris layer, we're going to add a little bit of this uh, like outline in the iris that actually makes it really pop. Um, that is optional, but I, I think it makes a good difference. And to do it, you just pick a darker version of your base iris color and you, as you probably guessed it, just sketch the outline of it. And if you're using a brush that has pressure sensitivity and also um, kind of angle tilt, it's going to be way easier because as you can see here, I'm able to do a gradient by just pressing lighter on my screen and also tilting my pencil. And when I say tilting my pencil, I just mean um, I'm really getting it close to the, the screen. So basically the angle of my pencil on the screen is really, really small and that kind of it, it makes the brush behave differently depending on the brushes that you're using, of course, like I was saying. But it really helps in kind of creating something a bit smoother instead of a super sharp and small stroke. So I like to start with a lighter color and then go in with a darker version of the same color and adding even more detail. So I kind of do this outline in two different passes and you can do the same or you could go in just one pass if you want to have something that is a bit less contrasted so up to you here and in the second pass i'm doing pretty much the same thing but i'm focusing this time around the eyelids so on the top kind of corners and on the bottom corners i know they're not corners because you know it's a circle but <laughs> you get what i'm saying and once you have that darker ring around the edges of your iris you're going to move towards the actual texture of it. You know, that texture that is so typical of eyes. So to do it, go ahead and create a new layer, rename it to texture. It is also going to be a clipping mask and the blending mode of this one is going to be add. You can set the opacity somewhere around 40, 50%. It doesn't really matter because you can always go back to it later. And I'm going to go back to the color that I use for the base of my iris because since it is set to add, it's going to show up as a really light color and that's really cool. And very quickly and loosely, as you can see here, I'm going like super fast. You're just going to add some lines that kind of start from the center of your eye 
or like around the pupil and go towards the outside. And just like for the darker ring, I like going in with a secondary color, this time a lighter version of my blue in my case, or a lighter version of whichever color you used, and just kind of sprinkle in some more intense textural elements. So still we're going really quickly, really loosely, but it's going to add a little bit more dimension if you use two colors. And once you have this really super sketchy texture, go ahead and set your eraser to either the soft or medium brush in the airbrushing panel, or if you do have my big brush bundle, you can use the eraser shape. And you're going to loosely and lightly erase kind of the outer part of your texture so that it is not as opaque. So you don't want to fully erase it, you're kind of creating a gradient that starts from the outside of the iris and move in towards the center of the iris. So you do want to keep, again, like I was saying, you do want to see a little bit of that texture, but since it was super sketchy and since we added, want to add dimension, we're just erasing kind of the weird pointy bits or making them blend a little bit more at least. And you're going to do the same thing this time around the pupil that we have yet to draw, but don't worry, we're going to add that in just a few steps. We are going to add a little bit more details to this uh, like nice eye texture. This time the details are going to be darker. So to do that, go ahead and create a new layer. This is also a clipping mask and you're going to set the blending mode to multiply somewhere around 50%, 60%, but again, you can always come back later. And you're going to go back to your base color that you use for the eye and with the same brush you're just going to add some little dots and little lines that are going to come together to create more details and more a more interesting texture overall in the iris and as opposed to the actual you know texture layer that we just did with the lighter color you're not going to add details everywhere we're going to pick some sections and then add the details in there and that way you're going to get something super interesting and that looks a little bit less you know uh, structured you're going to get something that look more realistic and natural if you just pick some sections and focus on those you're also going to darken the surrounding area of what is later going to be the pupil before we move on to the pupil, we have one little step, which is to add a secondary curl. So to do that, I mean, that's optional, but it would be again, a clipping mask and the blending mode you would set to color. And you could draw this little really interesting ring of a secondary color in your eye. And you can go with something totally crazy. So in my case, I'm going with a golden yellow and it's going to make the eye pop so much in the end. And with the same brush, super quickly, you're just going to add pretty much, you can Pretend that the pupil is a sun and then you're adding some rays around it. Basically, that's the best way I can describe it. And you might want to just blending this color towards the middle a little bit as well, just to make sure that you don't have a gap between the pupil and the color. Speaking of which, it's finally time for the pupil. So go ahead and create a new layer. It is a clipping mask. It is set to normal and you're going to pick a dark color. Don't go with a full black. Otherwise, you won't be able to add shadows later, but just go in with a almost black. And with your same brush, you're going to draw very loosely. And I recommend that you don't use the same trick that we used earlier for the iris to create a perfect circle, because I do believe that if your iris or your pupil, I'm sorry, is too perfect and the edges are like super sharp, it looks a little bit strange. <laughs> so I like to have an iris that is a little bit misshapen and that also has, you know, kind of almost fluffy. <laughs> fluffy is not the right word, but edges that are not perfectly sharp. And just like you did for the iris, you can use the arrow tool to reposition it and make sure it is exactly where you want it to be in the eye. Awesome! So we're going to start adding some shadows and it's going to make the biggest difference. So to do that, create a new layer, rename it to shadow, set it as a clipping mask, and you're going to change the blending mode to linear burn. For now, we're going to keep the opacity at 100%. You're also going to pick a super light bluish purplish type of color, which is going to, again, add a lot of dimension in the eye as opposed to just going in with, you know, a gray color. And because the eyeball is a sphere, we want to make it look like it's not flat. So you're going to loosely outline the, the, the part of the eyeball that we see, so around the eyelids. And with your smudge tool, again, I like to set it to stucco brush, but you can use whichever smudge tool that you like. You're going to blend those uh, shadows in towards the center, so that is a nice gradient. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth though, because it is nice if there's a little bit of grit in your inset gradient. 
Once you're done blending everything in, go ahead and select a slightly darker version of your purplish gray. And this time, with the same brush that you've been using since the start, we're going to draw the actual shadow that the eyelid casts on the eye. So the first shadows we were drawing were actually kind of showing the fact that the eyeball is a sphere. Now we're just drawing kind of the cast shadow that are happening just because of eyelids. So this is a thicker line at the top and then a thin line at the bottom. And you can go and lower the opacity because at this point it's probably like very, very intense. I like to lower it somewhere around 70%, but that's going to depend on how dark or how light the gray that you picked at first was. So before moving on, we're going to group our uh, eye layer. So starting from the eyeball layer to the shadow layer, you're just going to swipe them towards the right, which is going to allow you to click on this group option here at the top. And then you're going to be able to rename this group to eye and clicking on this little arrow here, you're going to be able to collapse the group, which is going to make your file just more organized. You're then going to create another layer. This one, you're going to rename it to colors and you're going to set the opacity to around 90%. But again, we can go back later. And for this, you're going to pick the color that you used as your base skin, but you're going to make it a little bit more pink, a little bit darker. And the goal of this stage is going to be to add a little bit of variation of color in the skin, um, starting from this little inner corner of the eye. So I like to go super loosely. And again, by tilting my pencil, I'm able to have something that is a bit less opaque and a bit, it's just easier to create gradients. So filling in the inner corner of your eye and maybe the outer corner as well, just kind of giving it a little tint out there. And you're going to maybe very gently be careful, otherwise it's going to look like pink eye, but you're going to underline the eye, um, including this little thickness of the eyelid with this pinkish color. You might also want to add some pink on the top. So kind of starting from the fold towards pretty much the outside of your canvas or almost the eyebrow if you're drawing a full on portrait. And maybe you can add a little pink in the inside corner as well. So you can see it's very subtle. You don't want it to be overwhelming, but it, do, it does make everything feel just more alive, especially adding, you know, this pink in the inner corner. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can also go with a very light purple and with a super soft brush, you can add some purple in kind of the, the bottom corner of, of the eye, if that makes any sense. Um, but you have to be very, very light. So you can see here, I had to do it like four or five times because I want to make sure that it doesn't look like I got punched in the eye or this drawing got punched in the eye. You just want to add a bit more variation in your skin, which is a bit weird when you're drawing an eye by itself. But if you were drawing like a full in portrait, that would definitely be super important. And in this next step, we're going to add more details around the eye. So I like to create a new layer, setting it to multiply and lowering the opacity around 60%. I also like picking the same base color that I had for my skin and making it just slightly darker and going back with my brush that I used for pretty much everything. And this step, I mean, is a bit of a weird step. So you could definitely skip it if you're drawing this eye in the context of a portrait because you would probably have those details drawn already. If you're just drawing an eye by itself for some reason, you're definitely going to want to add a little bit more context around it. Otherwise, it's going to look really strange, at least in my opinion. And so that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to go fairly quickly because this is not the point of the tutorial. Um, but if you are drawing an eye, well, I mean, <laughs> you're probably drawing an eye because you're watching the tutorial. But in, in your case, make sure that you actually take the time to draw everything properly. So when I say draw everything properly, it means Again, go and look at references and see where the shadows are. Look at the folds around the eyes and draw them. So it's probably going to be the case of just outlining the eye itself and then reinforcing the creases that are created by the eyelid. And I like to go twice. So starting with a color that is very similar to my base color and then going in with almost a brown color. You might also want to add some lights, so go ahead and create a new layer. This one is going to be set to soft light and you're going to go back to your base skin color, but this time you're going to make it lighter. <laughs> you might want to make it a little bit more yellow as well to make it just, just warm up the entire piece. And again, I'm going to go very quickly here, but you're going to probably want to draw some lights on 
the top eyelid and on the bottom eyelid as well as kind of in the eye corner skin section and you might want to add some very soft light kind of in the center of the eyeball itself you might want to add some lights in the inner corner of your eye and maybe even draw kind of this down or draw this light down towards kind of the nose almost and you might want to add some lights as well kind of in the space between the eyelid and the eyebrow so you can see again this is super subtle and really quite loose because I don't want to spend too much time drawing the surrounding of the eyes the tutorial is already long enough and you know the skin is not the point here we are however going to create a new layer set it to add and the opacity around 80% this is going to be for the highlights which is really really important and for the highlights I like to go with a super bright blue color because that's going to add just even more dimension and we're going to start by adding the highlight in the eye itself and then we're going to move on to really quickly doing the um the skin so for the highlights in the eye you have to think what is in the environment and you're kind of drawing the reflection of the light source in the eye itself so in my case i'm pretending okay i have a window so i'm drawing like this rectangular shape and with my eraser i'm coming in and erasing maybe a very simple landscape that I would see in the window so I would have you know kind of the grass and then maybe some trees you can see I'm drawing here super loosely again but taking the time to create a world within the light of your eyes is super important because the eyes are really really reflective and so it's not going to be just like a bright circle it's actually going to be a reflection of the light source so make sure to keep that in mind and it's going to make a world of difference so yeah just imagine you know what would be around your character and kind of draw that in the light and in the reflection in the eye and it's going to look really really cool we're also going to add a little light kind of really right at the edge of the eyeball and the eyelid because this is usually where you know the liquid that covers the eye accumulates a little bit and the light tends to hit that and it creates some sort of a really bright um highlight so you're gonna mimic that i like to do it in kind of three little strokes and then going in with my eraser to make sure that they're very very subtle you don't want like a full outline in the bottom otherwise it's gonna look really strange and you're gonna create a second line pretty much in the same area but it is on the outside of the thickness of your eyelid hopefully that makes sense so you're gonna have two uh, almost horizontal lines that are going to be kind of stacked on top of each other um, on the bottom of your eye you can also add a little bit of a highlight in the outside corner of your eye this one i find that sometimes it looks really good sometimes it doesn't so experiment and if it doesn't look good in your case just don't do it <laughs> but what is important to do is to add uh, some highlights in the inner corner of your eye in this little pinkish uh, section and also some highlights on the top of the eyelid um, I like to make it really st streaky to show that the eyelid is not super smooth that it is kind of like this folded skin and um, yeah something just like that already makes such a big difference and makes the piece feel way more lively you might also want to add some light lights in the inner corner of your eye but on the outside this time so and like on the skin i mean and just like for the details layer i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here but if you're drawing you know an eye by itself make sure to pause the video and take your time to add as many highlights as you need to <laughs> We're also going to add some eyelashes so to do that create a new layer rename it to eyelashes and you're going to pick a very dark brown i don't like to go with full black again because then you're not able to add more shadows and here you have two options you either draw the eyelashes individually with a normal brush or if you have the portrait bundle you can pick one of the eyelash brushes and just making sure you have the right um, side for your eyes in my case this is a left eye so i'm going with a left brush and always starting from the left corner towards the right corner you can just really quickly swipe your pencil and add a bunch of lashes you can also use the liquify tool in the adjustment panel set it to push and kind of move your eyelashes a little bit to make sure that they are really well aligned with the actual um, eyelid and even if you are using the eyelash brush i always like to go back with you know 
an inking brush or the detail textured brush and a darker color not still not black but closer to black and adding some uh, freehand eyelashes to kind of break the pattern that comes with whichever eye, eyelash brush that you're gonna use is going to create more of a pattern basically so going in by hand and adding some extra eyelashes that way you can create clumps you can create some longer lashes some shorter lashes and really add a little bit of variation but an eyelash brush definitely saves you a lot of time and helps you kind of create a strong base to build on and you can also outline the bottom of the lash line here which is like straight up almost black color to make it you know a bit more dramatic <laughs> and even though that's not the fun step at least i really don't like it make sure that you take the time with a lighter brown to go and add some bottom lashes i know it's harder for some reason or maybe it's not maybe it's just hard for me but take the time and add some very very tiny lashes and you're gonna see it's gonna make such a big difference <laughs> Fun little tip, if you have the portrait bundle, you can create a new layer. This one you would rename to glitters or something like that. And this way you can add, well, <laughs> like glitters on the skin. So I like to set this layer to add and then lower the opacity or leave it 100%, whatever. And with the freckle brush set to a nice cream color, just brushing all over my piece mostly on the skin but a little bit on the eye as well and this just adds this like magical feel it's not super realistic but i like it <laughs> so there you go this was how to draw an eye in procreate i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel and you know this was really just the close-up on the inside of the eye itself if you want to learn how to draw the portrait and everything around the eye make sure to check my full portrait video which will be linked in the description below and I will also link the portrait brushes, which, you know, they're not necessary, but if you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below along with a promo code. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos just like this one every single week. I'll see you soon.